Putin's secret $1 billion mansion. Did you know that Vladimir Putin's first term as president, he began construction on the secret palace just to catch a bit of rest away from the 20 or so other residences he has access to that would eventually end up costing a reported $1 billion? Welcome back to Tech NXS, a place where luxury and finance lovers come to get inspired. On a thickly wooded mountainside overlooking Russia's Black Sea coast, an extraordinary building has gradually taken shape. It is alleged to be a palace built for the personal use of Vladimir Putin. This palace is built with massive and illegal use of state funds. Of course, he denied any involvement in the project, and some mysterious, nearly untraceable company is listed on paper as the official owner of the home and property. This palace is located on the coast of the Black Sea. Putin just happened to regularly drop by and check in on the construction. Originally conceived, it is said that this is a modest holiday house with a swimming pool. It also has a magnificent column facade reminiscent of the country palace's Russian Tsars that were built in the 18th century. The massive wrought iron gates that open into the courtyard are topped with a golden imperial eagle. Outside of this courtyard, there are formal gardens, a private theater, a landing pad with base for three helicopters, and also accommodation for security guards. All this and more is revealed by satellite images of the area and photographs on the internet, which campaigners say were leaked by workers at the site. Shortly thereafter, a slew of cell phone photographs of the palace and grounds surfaced under Russian versions of WikiLeaks, proving just how over-the-top the place is. Many of the photos include a mystery dude posing in front of things. So, here's a pro tip. Don't take pictures of yourself in the super-secret lair of Vladimir Putin unless you enjoy prison. While photo evidence is fairly limited in its scope, the sprawling pad is known to have its own casino, church, and four heliports. The mystery of why the place was built and who provided the enormous sums of money required to pay for it is much harder to uncover. But now, with Vladimir Putin about to be sworn in for a third term as Russia's president, one of his former business associates have spoken to BBC Newsnight, giving more detail than ever before about how he says the mansion was built to the leader's specifications for his personal use. Sergei Klesnikov, who now works in the Estonian capital Tallinn having fled Russia, was for several years one of those responsible for building the palace. He is the first insider from Mr. Putin's business circle to blow the whistle on what he says is the high-level corruption threatened to destroy the country's economy. Kolesnikov says he was involved with two of Mr. Putin's friends, Nikolai Shamalov and Dmitry Gorelov, in a venture proposed by Mr. Putin himself to provide Russian hospitals with new equipment. Several Russian oligarchs, including Chelsea football club owner Roman Abramovich, donated millions of dollars to help upgrade Russia's hospitals. Kolesnikov imported the medical equipment and he says his company was able to get big discounts on the supplies. Some of the donors denied that was possible, but Kolesnikov says millions of dollars were saved in this way and at Mr. Putin's suggestion, much of that money was put into offshore companies without the donor's knowledge for use in other investment projects. These included ailing industries such as shipbuilding, Projects Kolesnikov says he discussed directly with Putin, but an ever greater proportion of the extra funds, he says, went into Project South, which was the Black Sea Palace near the village of Praskovivka. Kolesnikov told Newsnight that he was at a meeting with Putin in his country house outside Moscow when the issue of the Black Sea Palace was raised directly. He says the Russian leader ordered his powerful deputy prime minister Igor Sechin to deal with it. Shortly afterward, Kolesnikov says Setchin summoned him to discuss details. He also says he had had many other meetings at the palace itself where Mr. Putin's instructions for fittings and furnishings were discussed with a senior officer in the Federal Security Service, which guards the president and prime minister. More usually, he says Putin passed on his instructions for the building through his friend and Mr. Kolesnikov's partner, Nikolai Shamalov. He didn't seek to justify it. Kolesnikov says, he considered that whatever the Tsar decided, it wasn't our business to discuss. 
There was a star and there were slaves who didn't have their opinion, Kolesnikov says. But the whistleblower says he eventually became disgusted by the sums being spent on the palace and fell out with his partner Shamalov. It hadn't worked 15 hours a day for 10 years to build the palace, he says. That didn't interest me. In December 2010, Kolesnikov wrote an open letter to President Dmitry Medvedev detailing the involvement of himself and others in the project and outlining his allegations against Putin, then Prime Minister. Newsnight attempted to contact Shamilov and Kolesnikov's other former partner, Dmitry Gorilov, but their company said they were unavailable for comment on this story. Putin's spokesman has denied Mr. Kolesnikov's allegations along with other claims about the Russian leader's personal assets. Officially, the palace belonged, until recently, to a company partly owned by Shamilov. Now it is owned by another businessman who is not directly connected to Putin, but documents obtained by one of Russia's few opposition newspapers, Novaya Gazeta, and seen by Newsnight suggest that the Kremlin lied when it said it had no involvement in the building of the palace. An agreement to build the mansion on state-owned land was signed by the head of the Department of Presidential Affairs, Vladimir Kozhin, who subsequently denied knowing anything about the site. The documents do not prove that the palace was meant for Putin himself or that he was personally involved in its construction. In its construction, but mystery still surrounds it. When anti-corruption campaigners managed to get through the front of the palace last year, they were met not only by private security guards, but also by uniformed members of the official Kremlin Guard Service. Later, the private security company claimed its employees had simply bought the uniforms and Kremlin identity cards in a shop. But for the campaigners and Kolesnikov, the Kremlin's guards' presence and the elaborate infrastructure indicate the true purpose of the building and what they say is the massive illegal use of state funds. It's the building of a road direct to the palace on government money, Kolesnikov says. A high-power electric line direct to the palace, the government spent tens of millions of dollars on these. If it was just for Putin's friend Shamilov, why would the Federal Guard Service commission and monitor the building of the palace? Why would he need three helipads? A private person doesn't need these, but for a president, they are essential. This hideous ball alone is probably worth more than your house. It was reported that the property was sold to one of Putin's close business associates for $350 million. And that's it for Putin's $1 billion mansion. If you liked the video, then hit the like button and make sure to subscribe to our channel to watch more amazing content in the future. See you next time.